Hello, everyone, and welcome to Great Talks. I'm Danny, and today we'll talk with Gary Willoughby, the executive director of the Gulf Coast Humane Society. If you haven't heard about it yet, the GCHS mission is to create, uh, to care, actually, not create, to care for companion pets in need by offering safe refuge, providing medical care, and facilitating adoptions. Just before we begin, I'd like to remind you that is, if you're new here, or maybe if you haven't done that yet, remember to subscribe to our podcast in your podcast app or in YouTube. All right. Now, hello, Yeri. Welcome to Great Talks. Thank you for having me. No, our pleasure. We always like to talk about these initiatives. And just before we begin, tell us a bit about where are you located and what are the problems you're seeing right now? Sure. We're, our main office is in Fort Myers, Florida, in the southern part of the United States. And this is a very warm part of the country. And so uh, it means a long season of kittens and puppies being born uh, throughout the state of Florida. So this is a very busy time as a lot of kittens come in uh, looking to uh, be fostered until they're old enough to go up for adoption. Oh, that's nice. And uh, well, I feel like we share some weather. <laughs> I understand that situation. I have my own ad adopted dog here. So I understand how those things flow. But what exactly do you do right now to help these animals? Sure, in, in, in a variety of ways, we also offer a high volume spay neuter clinic. So if people don't wanna have unplanned kittens and puppies, uh, we do about 9,000 surgeries per year in our clinic uh, at affordable rate, uh, rates, um, including feral cats, which are a big uh, contributor overpopulation. A lot of people have outside cats and, and they feed them but don't, don't always take the time to get them spayed or neutered and they end up with lots of litters of kittens. So we do a lot of that surgeries. Uh, and then we also take in about 3000 cats and dogs per year that we put up for adoption. Wow, that's that's a huge number. And uh, so in some interviews that I've done before, people often spoke about cat season. Mm -hmm. Do you experience that in, in, in there? Yeah, it's, uh, and we call it kitten season. And that's oh, mostly when, season, when yeah. it's the warmer weather, that's kind of the... Uh, the time that's kind of the mating season, I guess, for the cats and the dogs. Okay. So um, I was previously up in uh, Buffalo, New York, where the and much colder. And so that season is a lot sh shorter there. So uh, the northern climates of the United States tend to have a shorter summer season for kittens. Uh, where Florida, it's pretty warm all year round. Oh, I get it. I get it. And we are talking about dogs and cats, but do you work with any other animals, different species? Uh, not as much at this shelter. We we have rabbits for adoption, and we might occasionally get other small animals like that, but we're not set up for horses or anything like that, like I have been at uh, another organization. So uh, there are other groups uh, who handle wildlife and horses and things like that here in this part of Florida. Oh, okay, I get it. And how does the process to adopt a, a, a pet works through you? Yeah, we have all of our animals that are up for adoption on a variety of websites. And so people can go in and they can seek out one. They can even fill out an application online, but we're open for adoption seven days a week. So they can come and visit us, spend some time with an animal. Um, if they have a dog, they or if they want to adopt a dog and have another dog already, they can also bring their dog in and our staff will work with them just to make sure your current dog likes the new dog that you want to bring home. Because sometimes as humans, we might fall in love with one particular dog the rest of the family also has to accept that dog as well. We want to make sure it's a lifetime, uh, you know, a good fit for you and your entire yeah. family. Yeah, it's a lifetime commitment, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, looking through your website, which, by the way, everybody, is gulfcoasthumansociety.org. Check it out. You have under the, the menu adopt, you have the Dolly's Dream, right? Mm -hmm. What is that? It's a group on the other uh, coast of Florida that uh, helps to donate resources to usually get the bull, bull terrier, the uh, pit bull type dogs that are overlooked often in shelters to get them some uh, notoriety and some attention so they can get forever home. So uh, it includes uh, sponsoring a certain amount of dogs in area shelters, uh, which also includes their adoption fee, a dog crate, some toys, a bed, a, a variety of things to get you set up on the right foot. So, cause often when you acquire an animal, uh, there's a lot of extra expense in getting all the supplies you need right away as well. So this helps make it easier on somebody who's considering a particular dog uh, to be able to know uh, that they won't have to worry about unexpected uh, supply bills right out, the, right out the gate. Yeah, that's great. That's 
actually makes a whole difference, especially if you're unexperienced with dogs, right? You don't yeah. really know what to expect. So having that support, it's it's vital to keep to keep it going. Yeah, so you don't give up on your dead option right away. And now moving a little bit to the clinic work that you do, how does that work? We have two different types of clinics. Uh, so one is just strictly spay and neuter. So we see your pet one time. Uh, if they need shots at the time, their vaccines, we do that as well uh, on microchips. But that's just strictly designed to help uh, counter the pet overpopulation problem, which is still big in parts of the United States. Then separately, in a separate building, we have a wellness clinic, which is a, a low-cost, affordable veterinary clinic to keep your pets healthy uh, and in the home after and uh, long after you've adopted them. But you don't have to adopt a pet from us to use that clinic. Uh, so we, we know the cost of veterinary care is a lot for folks to afford. Uh, and so we see about 15,000 pet visits every year at that clinic. It's very, very um, popular in our area. So you can get your flea, flea preventative, your heartworm preventative, uh, your annual wellness shots. Uh, if you need any prescription medicine or things like that, uh, you can get that done. And there's even scholarship programs in both of those clinics should somebody uh, struggle with those costs, even those low costs. Because sometimes people have more than one pet uh, or they might have a more serious situation that they need help with. So our donors make that possible by donating strictly to funds to make all that possible for people. Wow, I didn't know that. That's that's incredible. That's actually very, very helpful and useful. And I can see many situations that it could be applied. And uh, how can actually people get in touch to, to get these the services? And they, the spay neuter clinic, they can make an appointment right off of our website. You can go uh -huh. online and fill out all the information there. Uh, in our wellness clinic, you can just call us and, and make an appointment. So you also get a free visit if you adopt a pet from us uh, afterwards too, just to make sure everything's going okay. Because you know the animals may have been spayed or neutered while they were here. Uh, some have other surgeries. They might have had uh, dental work. Uh, they might have they might have had flea problems when they came in or were very skinny. Uh, and they get that free visit just to make sure the animal's on the road to recovery. Um, we also uh, have, for folks that are struggling out in the community, a very vibrant pet food pantry. Uh, so we donate a lot of pet food uh, to low-income folks who need that. Um, I think for the last two years, it's been over 38 uh, tons of food that we donated throughout our area when folks are really struggling to, uh, and are maybe thinking they have to surrender their pet because they can't afford to feed them properly anymore. Wow. Again, another great idea. I didn't know about that either. And I'm, I'm checking again to your website and you have here as a goal to have 3,000 pets adopted as a goal for this year. It's insane to think of this number. I feel like I would never guess that there would have that many. Uh, and you are getting around 1,000. That's impressive. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, and it's, it's a, it's a good goal. I mean, the, the times are, the economy is a little tough right now here in, in our part of the country. Uh, and so the cost of living has gone up a lot. So it slowed down our adoptions a little bit, but um, we are, we're very proud that people come in here seven days a week looking to adopt from us. Uh, and not only just from us, but there are a number of other uh, adoption agencies in our area. So more and more people are choosing to adopt an animal instead of buying one from a store, which we really appreciate. Oh, I get it. And, uh, I, did you see any numbers like going high after COVID pandemic? Because I feel like we, we all have seen that happening in many places. Did that happen in, in there too? It, it's been slow to, we're starting to get more owner surrenders. Uh, here in our area, we're seeing it more because the housing prices are going up so rapidly that people are having to move out. They can't afford their rent anymore uh, or they can't find a place to rent if they have a dog. Uh, and they may have to move back in with family. Um, Unfortunately, some people that are becoming homeless um, or have to move to a different part of the country that's less expensive. So uh, it's impacting uh, some folks uh, more than others. But we're seeing some animals that uh, that families absolutely love. That, but even with pet food uh, and low cost medical care, uh, they just can't find a affordable place to rent that allows, especially if they have a bigger dog. Oh, I get it. I see. And in the unfortunate case when an owner cannot keep their pet anymore. Do you have uh, a service that could take this pet in? How does that work? Yes, uh, we call them owner surrenders. And so people can make, we try to ask for them to make an appointment if they can. So uh, a, a fair amount of our animals come in that way, whether they adopted from us or got them from somewhere else. 
It also, um, there are a lot of older people in Florida, so they may be somebody who's going into a nursing home or unfortunately passed away and have an older pet. So we tend to get a lot of older uh, small dogs as well mm -hmm. that maybe um, are, you know, are nice, nice dogs to be adopted and nice cats, uh, but just somebody didn't want to give them up and just unfortunately weren't able to physically take care of them anymore. So uh, we do take in a lot of owner surrenders as well as we go to other um, shelters and transfer in dogs and cats from crowded shelters in our in about five different counties around here. Yeah, and, and for an owner that cannot take care of their pet anymore, it's definitely best to surrender them to you than just leave them, abandon them anywhere, right? Yeah, certainly. And yeah. sometimes people may have a friend or a neighbor or a family member that can take that pet, but if they don't, um, we'll do a really good job of trying to find a, a permanent home for that pet for them. So that's one less thing they have to worry about if they're considering moving into a, you know, an assisted living facility or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you began working in 1947, right? So it's been a long ride so far. And sure. where do you see yourselves in the future, let's say in five, 10 years ahead? Yeah, we're celebrating our 75th anniversary this year here at the Gulf Coast Humane Society. We were the first animal welfare organization in this part of Florida. Uh, and so we've seen a lot of things change over the years and the spay neuter uh, clinic is one of the best improvements we've had in the future. So both our spay neuter clinic and our public clinic are so popular now that we've outgrown the space. So we're hoping to build a bigger and better uh, clinic in the next couple of years, uh, as well as some innovations on um, trying to have more veterinarians and more veterinary students come here. Um, there's a veterinary shortage around our country now. Uh, and so we're trying to recruit more and train more doctors. Uh, I've done that in other organizations and that's uh, having well-prepared veterinarians uh, and vet techs is super important to be able to provide that medical care for people. Oh, absolutely. And now moving to my final question for you today, that is how can people get involved? What is the best way for people to help you out? Yeah, and, and we always use as a starting point, the easiest thing is to start at our website and see because everybody's different and unique. Uh, some folks may want to adopt, some folks may want to foster uh, a young kitten for a little while until it's old enough to be spayed or neutered. Uh, they may be able to attend one of our fun special events. Um, they may be able to donate to us. They might want to come work for us. They might want to volunteer with us. Um, we always are needing certain types of donations, whether it's uh, paper towels or pet food or blankets. And so we always have those types of lists. So there are a lot of um, very uh, varied types of ways that you can help that some require a lot of time and some may just be, I'm gonna pick up a couple extra things the next time I'm at the grocery store uh, and, and donate them to the Humane Society. So starting with our website and you can kind of look and judge by the um, your schedule, your budget, uh, your interests. Uh, and there are a variety of ways that we'll, uh, we'll, that we'll be able to find for you. Even the place you work, we have companies that come out here as a group and do projects for us uh, or schools that come out here. So your kids might be able to come out here and do a project. So there are a lot of different ways. Uh, starting with our website is a good place to start for anybody. That's perfect. And just to remind everyone, the website is gulfcoasthumanesociety.org.org. And just to squeeze a little question here, uh, because you have the Oakens Fund mm -hmm. under the Donate tab there. What is that? That is for our wellness clinic that I was mentioning. So uh, we have very affordable prices there, but there are times where uh, let's say an animal swallows something and, and gets sick or uh, injures a leg or needs some sort of a complicated medical procedure above and beyond what they can afford, even with our low cost prices. So it's kind of a scholarship to be able to help people who otherwise might have to surrender that pet. So we have a number of people who donate um, to that program for the wellness clinic. We have a spay it forward that they do in our spay neuter clinic. So people who can't afford to pay spay neuter. And then we have a second chance fund for shelter animals that come into us that maybe have a broken leg uh, or need some sort of a surgery. And so uh, just because you can't adopt uh, or volunteer here, sometimes people donate a little bit of money just so they know that good work can go on for in another, in another way. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us today, Gary. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much. And for everyone listening also, thank you as well. And remember, if you enjoyed this episode, press subscribe and remember to like as well the, the episode on your podcast app or in YouTube because that shows the algorithm that this is an important conversation and more people can learn about the importance of the Gulf Coast Humane Society. I see you guys at the next episode. Bye.